In this installment of our Lap Around America, we continue east on US 50, the loneliest road in America. And if I seem animated, it's just because it's just so friggin' gorgeous. It's so open. We encounter a swarm of giant Mormon crickets, enough to make Stephen King break into a cold sweat. Cross into Utah, and a story about a motorcycle rider who had to use his satellite personal locator beacon to call for a rescue helicopter after an injury in the backcountry. We are John and Miriam. We may live along the Virginia coast, but for the next few months, we will again call the road our home. We plan to ride our Can-Am Spider to the Pacific coast and back, over 7,000 miles through 16 states. We are calling this trip a lap around America. We know this odyssey will offer up its full survey of adventure, scenic beauty, along with the standard dose of challenges. But that's what we signed up for. Austin, New Mexico. <laughs> Except we're uh, in Nevada. We're not in we're, Austin, New Mexico. We're we not in Nevada. We haven't been in New Mexico for a long, long time. <laughs> we no. haven't had enough coffee, though. No, we haven't. Oh. <coughs> so the, the Cozy Mountain Motel was was okay. It was a little bit like a summer camp experience. Well, you know, but it was well worth the money. It was, uh, I think we paid just over a hundred. And uh, there's the courthouse. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was different. It was the people, the other guests who who stayed there were very friendly, and that that made it enjoyable. And, and Austin, it's it's just an interesting town to me. I, I can't imagine living in a, a place with population 300, but it's got a quite a rich, <coughs> you know, historical past. Yeah. A silver silver mine originally and I love their signs uh, social distancing since 1862 <laughs> in Austin Nevada yep. <clears throat> that about sums it up yeah we got a short ride today uh, 147 miles just because the distance between accommodations that we would want to stay in yeah. We err on the side of quality, just so we can get a good night's sleep, which is really important. Uh, yeah. The Cozy Mountain Hotel had a memory service of 4.7 Google, with uh, over a rating. Yeah, with over a hundred uh, reviews. So, uh, and it, it uh, turned out to be uh, a good place. I think it's popular among motorcyclists. It's a motorcycle area. Route yeah. 50 is a, is a big deal out here. Yeah, that, um, that burger last night was a pleasant surprise. My goodness, a, a food truck. Well, it was, uh, we got burgers and fries, no drinks, and it was uh, over $40. But <laughs> you can't beat that price anywhere within an hour, hour and a half riding time. Okay. Well, but it was, it was delicious, that's the thing. Look at that view. Anyway, where are we at today uh, on US 50? It's showing about uh, 64 degrees, warming up fast. I've got my liner in, Miriam's got her liner in, and we suspect that, uh, well, the temperature's going to be in the uh, high 80s, low 90s. But, uh, as we transit the Great Basin,
see all these dots in the road? Okay. Well, they're not dots. These are, oh my gosh, it's a swarm of Mormon crickets. Why they're called Mormon crickets and escapes me. And we're running over them by the hundreds and the hundreds. And they're probably kicking up on the back of the trailer. And yeah. Oh, they're going to be, they're going to be petrified on the back of the trailer. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. Good, it may, may affect your traction. They stink, I can tell you that. Oh my word. They say there, there are more of them in periods of drought, which is what we're experiencing I right now. I have to because of the smell. I just... With the breakfast options in Austin, Nevada, non-existent, we decided to drive the 70 miles over to Eureka. We pulled into Clementine's and had a pretty scrumptious breakfast. Then Miriam noticed a post office on the way into town. We stopped, and she bought the entire inventory of postcard stamps, all 18 of them. So, we started our day from... Uh Austin, Nevada, heading over to Eli, Nevada, and there was the only town in between was Eureka, where we stopped for brunch and got some gas. Nice little town. And this is the area that we're in. There is, uh, there are no improvements. There are no gas stations, convenience stores, nothing for 67 miles to uh, Eli. You know, it is beautiful, you know, like a dry lake bed out there. And for those of you that are inquiring where is it that uh, Area 51 is, that's a, that way. And I can personally tell you that as an Air Force veteran, when I was very young, the most horrifying thing I've ever experienced on an Air Force base was 17 generals. Brown delivers everywhere, here they come. went downstairs to the buffet and got some coffee and I'm Miriam is cautioning me that I'm getting too conditioned to the rhythm of this trip and I went, what do you mean she goes when we get home you're gonna wander into the kitchen look for a paper plate and the buffet <laughs> and there won't be one okay all right so we're gonna stop by the car wash to uh it would make me feel better besides the mud from the Sierra Nevada mountains we need to get rid of the evidence of the massacre of Mormon crickets from the day before. Well, I enjoyed this stay. The hotel was very comfortable, and um, the sunset that yeah. we could watch from our window was just awesome. Yeah. And today we are heading to some place in Utah. Richfield. Richfield, we have a room reserved. So it's, right now it's comfortable. It's about uh, 75 degrees already, and it's just 8 o'clock. Yeah. And we're going to go look for a car wash. Yeah, I think it's going to be up on the left. I just, I wish we had taken the time to explore the historic downtown area because it looked like, you know, a cute spot, and um, I would have liked yeah. to have gone to the Art Bank and the Railroad Museum, and there's another Pine County Museum that looked interesting. That, so really, you could spend a day in Eli. It would have been a great place to spend a Yeah, day. it looked like there were some just cute restaurants downtown. And we did get here early. I mean, we checked in at the earliest we've ever checked into a hotel. We left at 12 at noon, but uh, it was a hot ride yesterday, and I think I got a little bit dehydrated. We just need to push fluids more. Yeah. I mean, we're, we brought plenty of water with it, so it's not like we're running out. Yeah. We're also near the Great Basin National Park, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's beautiful. I'm not sure how, yeah. how far a ride it would be to get out there, but... Yeah, 
Although I felt like we were riding through a national park yesterday, uh, just on Highway oh, 50. Oh my word, it was incredibly gorgeous openness. Well, we got the mud off the, uh, off the trailer, which is good, because that was the most big and unsightly. But the dried bug carcasses from yesterday are glued to this trailer, and uh, it's going to require uh, some rubbing with some cleaner and some rags. I didn't bring any cleaner. No worries, so gonna have to uh, maybe on our rest day in Moab. Oh, and last night we watched uh, in honor of our trip, uh, Wild Hogs. But I think you all ought to get back on your bikes and go out and ride on the highway until you remember what riding's all about. Well, Wild Hogs, ride hard or stay home. Yeah. Oh, way up there in those peaks. So I'm feeling a little anxious. Uh, the GPS indicated that the fuel stops uh, were further away than I had programmed. And we're just below a half. But the nearest gas station is still behind us according to the GPS. But we saw a sign that says uh, there's gas right up here 24 hours a day. So, uh, and, well, I hope that's the place. Because, you know, we're not short on gas, but I just feel better operating between a half and a full tank out here. And the gas is below. Six dollars a gallon. It's a miracle. <laughs> Utah life elevated. Okay, cool. So here's a question. Since we crossed over right over here, we crossed into mountain time from Pacific time. That means it's an hour ahead of us over there. So it's really 1130. So if we sat here for an hour, we'll see us over there if we stop and wave at us, right? Does it work that way? No, I better not look. I just might be in there. Now we're in Utah. Yay! We saw a sign that said the next gas service was 79 miles. But that's a long way to go without gas or services. And of course, we've been out of cell phone range now for over an hour, two hours. So we're out here on this road. We have had several people pass us. Um, but it's good to know that worse comes to worse, that we do have the ability to call for help with our satellite beacon. We pass a temporary road sign stating cattle in road ahead. As we come around the bend not 50 yards later, we find the cow. I'm sitting there going, that sign must be serious because it's just temporary. And I looked up, there's a cow on the road. <laughs> well, that breaks the monotony of this boring stretch of road. Well, it's not boring, but it's uh, just consistent. That broke up the consistency. So Miriam just asked me if this is just as beautiful as Yosemite. Oh, yeah. This is what I've been dreaming of, to drive down a road. Look at this road. It's straight as an arrow and it just keeps going. We'll go over a mountain pass and drop down into another straight as a laser road, followed by another one, followed by another one. And if I seem animated, it's just because it's just so friggin' gorgeous. It's so open. And, wow, I'll come down now. But it's, wow. We pass through Milford, Utah. 
It was time for lunch, and we found Penny's Diner. Stopped in and had a quick bite. Before continuing on. If you follow the channel, you may recall that I mentioned that I was quite an active pilot in my younger days, and I also used to fly a lot of search and rescue missions with the Civil Air Patrol. So you can imagine when it comes to emergency equipment, I'm a little OCD. Um, we knew going into this trip that we anticipated riding in some pretty remote areas uh, with very, very low traffic. So should something go wrong or we were at a cell phone range, we knew we would be in a pickle uh, if we couldn't get out. So we decided to go ahead and pick up a satellite-based emergency locator beacon. Uh, in theory, you press the button, it sends a message to the satellite, which goes down to the Search and Rescue uh, Coordination Center, and they send you help. While we were staying at the hotel in Austin, Nevada, I noticed a two-wheel adventure motorcycle parked next to our spider, and uh, I actually struck up a conversation with uh, the operator. Uh, his YouTube channel is Meerkat, and I'll put that link up here uh, if you want to check out his, his work. He does a lot of off-road or back-road adventure kind of motorcycle. And we were talking about trips and traveling the roads, and he asked me if I had a personal locator beacon. And I said, of course I do. And he told me about how his probably saved his life. Some months back, he was operating in some pretty remote areas uh, of the desert southwest, took a spill, and severely injured his ankle. He would be not able to ride his motorcycle or even walk out, and he was by himself. It was quite hot, and he knew he was in a pickle. So he checked his cell phone, and he had really, really bad coverage. He could intermittently get part of a bar, but you can't call for help with that. So he went ahead and activated his emergency locator beacon, and he made a shade with his motorcycle jacket over his handlebars and waited. Uh, three hours later, a search and rescue helicopter landed, and uh, they triaged him and medevaced him to a local hospital. So if you're considering traveling anywhere in the backcountry where you're likely to be out of cell phone range and you're going to be traveling either with your alone, either alone or with just one other person, it might behoove you to consider getting a personal emergency locator beacon. They're relatively inexpensive and the monthly subscription is relatively cheap and in the periods of time that you're not using it, you can get a monthly subscription and simply turn the service off. You know, statistically, the odds are you can go your entire life and never need an emergency locator beacon or need to call for search and rescue to come fish you out of a predicament. That's the statistical probability. But what if you're wrong and the odds beat you? The results can be catastrophic if you're not prepared. A special thanks to Meerkat ATV for allowing us to use the clips we, uh, we've used here. I'm going to put a link to the videos. Uh, he has two videos about the accident. I'm going to put them up here and you know, share the love and, uh, and take a look at those. They're quite interesting and informative. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video as we approach our overnight accommodations. In our next installment, we continue east towards Moab, the center of the cultural universe, for a few well-deserved rest days. If you've experienced adverse situations in your travels, let us know in the comments. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Y'all take care.